right, folks, it's time to get into my review of episode two of season 11 of The Walking Dead. This is Acheron part two. And by now, you you know, you obviously have watched the first part in the first episode. And the reason why they gave it this name, if you don't know, is because uh, this is a river in Hades. And based on that mega storm that they went through in the first episode, I guess that's why they felt fit for the name. But we really didn't really get that into <laughs> this episode. And I wonder why. Like, I think they probably could use a different name for this episode. But no here, no there. But yeah, this episode will be airing Sunday, August 29th. Now, again, this is the first time you're ever checking out my review here. No spoilers. Um, You can catch spoilers in the recap episode. But for the review episode, I'm just here to get you prepared for things you can expect for this episode. So... This episode starts off immediately where the first episode ended. Maybe that's why this is part two. Um, exactly where that cliffhanger left us. And yeah, so that's where it starts off here. Um, and beyond that, you know, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Parts we can actually talk about because I don't want to spoil the first part or this one. Um, Yumiko, has uh, she's channeling her inter Karen here. Uh, she's still trying to navigate through the Commonwealth. Um, she has a sense of purpose here. And it's with this purpose that she has like it's going to put their group in a little bit of a a awkward situation to say and you're you're going to see how it plays out but it's kind of like everybody else had one plan and she had another plan but you know they're usually cohesive in regards to planning so you know we'll, we'll see if they get back on track uh with this little a uh, wild card that has come in her direction. But yes, yeah, very, very unexpected, shall I say. Um, let's talk about Daryl, who is the ultimate scavenger. The reason why I love Daryl, besides every reason that everybody else loves Daryl, is that he always, in his journeys, he always finds clues and stories about everything that happened before the world turned upside down. So I feel like his character, as much as he is a the ultimate survivor... Uh, I think he brings a certain sense of humanity to the story. Because every time he always finds stuff, he finds stories. And he just finds, like, like they, things that remind us of where, how things were before it got to the zombie apocalypse. And that's something else you will see in this episode where Daryl just seems to always do this. And it's so heartwarming and felt. And just, like, you know, as, as, as much as he's a Stone Cold killer and the ultimate survivor, as I said... He just always seems to bring that humanity aspects to each and every episode. However, <laughs> dog has been stressing me out for the last two episodes. That's all I'm going to say. That that dog, I tell you, stressing me out for two episodes. But um, going back to the Commonwealth. So the Commonwealth, as you know, um, well, if you don't know, if you haven't read the comments, Commonwealth is just another civilization another group another whatever hey they had their own style of how they go about things like a bureaucracy and whatnot and we haven't seen anything of this sort source on the walking dead universe thus far it's not crm it's not the sanctuary but if you are familiar with it with it in the comments then you know exactly what to expect but trust me if you haven't it's totally different and the reason why I'm premising that is because if you're going in here thinking like, oh, it's just another group. They're going to just go about the same way they always do. Be open hearted here. Things is a little bit different than you're expected. And that, I think, brings a really interesting aspect going forward. And although the comics has source material and whatnot, we, that doesn't guarantee that it's going to go exactly how the comics will, as you know by now. Uh, and by the way, as we talk about um, the Commonwealth, Mercer and you, uh, Mercer and uh, Ezekiel, I think they're going to be best friends by the end of this. I'm telling you, they got some interesting scenes together and another one on this that uh, makes me think that they're probably going to be pals. But you, you never know. It's a hard read, shall I say. But yes, at the Commonwealth, it's another day, yet another processing session. But uh, Eugene, Eugene puts on... A speech of the lifetime in this episode and it's totally hilarious um and by that speech maybe christmas comes early for him and you know you just have to wait and see but he definitely has a very uh interesting scene uh very very uh funny hilarious dialogue with that i love negan as i stated in episode one 
And I love the fact that he's not a kiss ass. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and he always has amazing commentary to him. So, like, you know, it's what you expect. And Jeffrey D. Morgan is just a man. Like, for real, for real. But um, Maggie, as I talked about last episode, and her just her ability to want to be the leader and whatnot, and her happen to massage her way back into how things are with everybody else or, or for everybody else to be accustomed to how she is, Maggie's going to be a problem. That's what I'm going to just project here. Maggie's going to be a problem. Not to mention, we get this very eerie, similar scene in this episode that's very similar to the 2014 Godzilla movie. Um, I guess I'll leave that at that as well, too. But I will say, with Maggie, Maggie being a problem, me, me personally, as much as I like her and as much as I like Lauren, um, I don't agree with Maggie's decisions all the time. And some of the things that she do is shocking, but not really shocking. It's kind of like on par for her, you know? So, but at the same time, I do sympathize with her because she is totally emotionless, as you would expect, for everything that she's been through, especially with Glenn. Um, and then now having to raise a son and obviously being across from the person who killed her husband. But she also tells a story as to, like, to further drive that point as to why she's, like, really without emotion. How she kind of navigates the world. Um, so, yeah, you, you'll see. And maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you won't. I have got to say that I want more Elijah. He was pretty badass last season with the hand-to-hand combat. I mean, before he unmatched, she was like, oh, who the hell is this guy with Maggie? And I felt like this was the episode to really give that opportunity for him to get back to what he does best. They missed it for me. So I'm just going to easily say that I want to see more and more of him back to how he was. Because they, they went through some things and they had to they, they had to use their skill. But, you know, he, he, he didn't give me what I wanted. So, you know, we'll see. Um, amongst the group, though, we do see some surprising canter between people. Yeah, you make your own predictions on that. And um, as far as how this episode was shot, there's a scene with Daryl as he's combating through a train car. It is shot beautifully. It is, it's almost epic, like, how it's done. And Daryl's just a man. Like, by now, like, if you're not a fan of Daryl, you probably are blind. Because <laughs> there's literally no way you cannot be a fan of of Daryl and what he does. And even if you are blind, you definitely love some Daryl because he's just that he's just that important to this group and to the Walking Dead family. Um interesting enough, and maybe I could be completely wrong here, but is Father Gabriel the best shot in the group? Because they had this man looking like he was uh part of the expendables, how he just couldn't miss, considering that he's missing one eye and blind in that eye, but he's definitely out here uh, being his best Sylvester Stallone, and I'm just confused because I'm like him of all people. So <laughs> you you'll kind of see, but nonetheless, this episode, all for all pun intended, is very explosive and there's a lot of blood splatter. So overall, I liked it. Um, I'm definitely excited to see where this season goes, and that leaves me with my last point: the ending. What a scene it was, and I think now, if you don't already know, but now you will, we officially got our baddies going forward with this season in a very uh, shocking introduction, shall I say. So, yeah, I'm excited. Um, I know all of the Walking Dead uh, family fans out there are excited, and I just can't wait to be able to check out episode three. But, yep, folks, jump in the comments. Let me know your thoughts about this episode once you get a chance to watch it. Or, if you're watching this beforehand, then let me know your level of excitement upon it releasing. Um, I'm not going to talk about spoilers, so let's not go there. You all can theorize everything you want down there, but I will not confirm. I will not confirm or deny anything. It's just up to you all to engage with each other. Um, And if you are dropping spoilers, I will delete it, by the way. But yeah, folks, that will do it for this. And I'll see you around for episode three.